Hi everyone, welcome to the first patch recipe video I'm going to do. Today we're going to be working with the Moog Grandmother. It's a semi-modular synth, which means we can patch these normal modules together in different ways. We're going to do a little bit of that today, but not a crazy amount. The patch we're going to be making is a rubbery sort of bass. Start off crafting the sound with the two oscillators. For oscillator 1, set it to 16 inches, sync it with oscillator 2, and set the waveform to be this square wave here. Not the thin pulse wave, but the square wave. For oscillator two, set it to eight inches. And set the frequency, just move it out a little bit. Give it a little bit of character. You see, if it's right on, it's not gonna be as cool. Everything needs to be a little crazy. So let's move it. It's a little too much. Then, Let's set the waveform to a triangle. In our mixer section, we're not going to be patching anything. We're going to set oscillator 1 to this sort of 75% range. And I say 75% just because I'm looking at the knob and it looks like 75%. But the truth is, on the Moog Grandmother, that 50% is sort of a normal connection. Anything all over that is going to give it a little bit of soft saturation, which is really cool when dealing with analog stuff. You hear that? Versus this. Just a nice, warm sort of sound. Then, we're going to move down to oscillator 2, and we're going to crank that bad boy all the way up to full. Pretty nice. Let's, uh, we'll skip the utilities for now. We're going to come to the filter. Set the filter to around 200. You're gonna notice, not a lot of sound coming out of here. Let's change the envelope amount to 100%. Let's take the resonance and just give it a little nudge. Nice. And then if you haven't, set keyboard tracking to one half. What that's gonna do is as you play the keyboard, it's gonna slowly open up the filter a little bit more. And by opening the filter, I mean it's gonna twist this knob for you. You can also set it to one to one, but I like one half just to be a little bit more subtle. When looking at the envelope, we're going to keep the attack all the way down at zero. We're going to put the decay really close. So like here's zero. Let's just turn it a little bit. Getting there, maybe a little bit more. That's nice. The release, if you put it to zero, you're just going to hear the note cut off like that. And that's not too rubbery to me. To me, a rubbery bass kind of leaves a little bit of a tail. So we'll turn that up. Not enough. Still not enough. Not enough. Close. And sustain midway. There's a few more things we want to do. First, let's patch the attenuator into the cutoff in and put the input of the attenuator to the keyboard velocity out and set the attenuator knob just a smidge to the right. To show you what I'm doing, I'm taking the keyboard velocity out and I'm basically telling it the harder I press, open up the filter more. So if we went all the way to the right and I barely touch it, see how it's still not really opening the filter at all? And then as I play it, boom, it's really opening the filter. Obviously, I don't want it that much, so we're just going to set it a little bit. Can you see what's happening there? Now, if we go back to the modulation section, we can give a little bit of a humanized element to it. Let's take the pitch amount just, just a tiny bit. You might not even be able to hear it at first, but to me, it just gives the sound a little bit of that almost like tape warble sort of effect. This brings a little bit of vintage vibe into it. We can have the cutoff get modulated slight a bit too. Keep the waveform at a sine wave or whatever you want. This is your patch you're making, of course. And you can set the pulse width amount a little bit, a little bit, a little bit stronger than normal. So now you get that really cool kind of rubbery sound. Here, I think I've got a sequence set up here.
really cool stuff in my opinion. You can mess around with the frequency heat knob here to kind of affect the timbre of the sound a little bit. See, here's it dead on. It still sounds pretty good. But if you move it to the right a little bit, you get a little bit more plasticky, rubbery kind of sound, which is of course what we're after. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, give it a fat thumbs down and tell me in the comments why. All right, guys, have a good one.